In this part, we are going to see a type of procedural animation using the so-called procedural noise and with a particular focus on the widely used Perlin noise. First, what do we call procedural noise? That can be spatial and or temporal. So in graphics, they are commonly used to model natural looking phenomena. First, it can be understood as a function that has some visible structure or pattern. And these patterns, they need to have limited frequency bandwidth, like white noise, for instance, uh, like a uniform random value, have unlimited frequency bandwidth. And so they do not exhibit pattern structure. So they cannot be used directly in graphics. Second, the structure of a procedural noise should not be periodic or at least not a visible one. Otherwise, it would not look like a natural phenomenon. And third, this function should be deterministic, meaning that the function should always give the same output for the same input. Otherwise, you cannot reproduce and control your result. And here is a set of noise used to generate 2D textures, which is a common application, although the use of noise has a wide application. So now, how can we create such procedural noise? Let us consider the objective of creating a continuous function f of a 1D variable x with limited frequency. A way to compute such function is to define it for integer x values as a pseudo-random deterministic function. For instance, we can consider the value of f given by a hash function that takes as input n and output a pseudo-random number. Then to define a continuous function in the real domain, we smoothly interpolate the values between each integer, and we can use that for smooth steps or cubic polynomials, for instance. So this function has the following property to be a noise. It's a continuous function, it is deterministic, it looks non-periodic, and it has a frequency limited around 1 in this case. So this function can further be computed in 2D, 3D, or any arbitrary dimension. And the algorithm to compute such function is pretty simple, like this one in 1D. For a given x, we compute the associated integer n value. Then we evaluate our hash function at n and n plus 1, or we can consider further neighbors if you want. And then we can compute the value f at position x using interpolation. Okay, so, but this only gives a low frequency function. In most situations, for real objects, we would like to see more details. Then we can look at the fractal object that typically models this type of high frequency. So the idea is to recursively add self-similar details. This process follows very simple rules and can lead to complex shapes. And some of the standard fractals look sometimes surprisingly close to natural details. However, standard fractals such as Mandelbrot, Sierpinski's triangles, Newton's roots, and so on, are very hard to control. So we are not using this directly in computer graphics. So the initial idea of Perlin noise that has been proposed by Ken Perlin in 1985 is to sum over the pseudo-random function that we defined previously with an increasing frequencies and decreasing magnitude. So as an example, we can start with f of x, then we sum it to 0.8 times f of 2x, itself sum to 0.8 squared times f of 4x, and so on and so on. At each step, the frequency of the function increases, but the magnitude of the details decreases. And at the end, we can see that the appearance of this function after a few summation in 1D and in 2D as a texture. And this is the general expression of the Perlin noise P. It is a sum over what we call some octaves. We have n octave, and for each octave, the magnitude decreases by the factor alpha, which is less than 1, which is called persistency, and an increase of frequency given by the factor omega. So this is some typical use case of this Perlin noise, Basically, we can directly use its values and display it as a height field surface. Then we directly get the representation that looks like a mountain. 
and using perly noise was, during a long time, the main approach to generate terrains in early video games. Of course, it can be used to generate textures, and we can modify the function in the summation if we consider a sum of absolute values, we have ridges appearing near the zero value. This is used to model the specific patterns of sun-like texture. Also, the marble effect, which is kind of overly used, consists in modifying the function using a sign function to get some regular oscillation, but the perly noise brings the details. And this noise can also be used for animated textures. We can translate the images and in adding a dimension to the noise and evolving into this dimension a long time, we can create some smooth time variation that looks like texture evolutions. And basically, this pearly noise is used for almost everything which is related to natural phenomena. From textures to detailed natural shapes like rocks, modeling explosions, so here we attach a density to spheres that rotates and falls procedurally, and we add the details using the noise on the density. If you want to see some examples, you can look at ShaderToy, which is a website with real-time shaders running on your graphics card, and type noise as keywords. Most of them will be variation of pearly noise and are able to do impressive results. As a final note, here is some improvements over the procedure I just presented. I showed previously a version of function f called value-based as we computed the value of f using the hash function. Actually, we can get better results using something called gradient-based noise. In this case, we set the value of the function to be zero at every integer value and use the hash function to set the value of the derivatives. This gives pseudo-random gradients instead of positions. And then we can interpolate similarly between the position and the gradients. This approach improves the frequency control of the function. We enforce a frequency of one, while using position can lead to more variation of low frequency and can lead to change of detailed appearance. The second improvement is the use of the so-called simplex noise. Instead of interpolating the values on a grid in 2D, 3D, and so on, we decompose the space into simplexes, which is triangle in 2D, tetrahedron in 3D, and so on. And then we interpolate on these simplexes. This avoids grid directional artifacts, and it's also faster to perform in high dimension compared to grid interpolation. Finally, if you want to know more about procedural noises in general, you can have a look at the state of the art from 2010 that categorizes other type of noises. And now is an exercise on the parameters of perly noise. I consider the reference terrain seen on the left. This terrain has been computed as a height field and the height as the following equation z equals to h, which is some parameter, times the perly noise p applied to two parameters, u and v, that are x and y. But these parameters are modified using the factors s and o. For the reference shape, I use nine octaves, an attenuation parameter alpha of 0.4, the h parameter as 0.3, the s parameter is 1, and o is 0. Now for each representation, A, B, C, D, E, and F, I change one parameter at a time. And so the question is, which parameter did I change, and which type of value did I use compared to the reference one? So this is a modeling exercise, but it makes you think about the type of variability you can play with. And now this is a second exercise with barely noise, but with animation. So I start with a simple surface given as S of U and V is equals to U, V, and Z is equals to zero. So this is a plane in the X, Y direction. Then we can actually add a perly noise that depends on time. For instance, if I add P of T in the Z component, the plane will move up and down a long time, which is shown in the second image. 
And we can also make the pearly noise depends on multiple variables. And on space and time. So on the right, we can see the results where we add a P of U and T in the Z component. And now is the question, how can I generate these animations from A to F using Perlin noise? In particular, which dimension of the Perlin noise I use, think that it can be in 1D, 2D, 3D, and with which parameter, U, V, and T, which is the time. 